This one's called Troll Town. It's about trolls. As we explore overcoming creative limitations and procrastination and all of the factors of resistance from within, let's also take a look and overview of that resistance that manifests itself externally and shows up as what are known as trolls or haters. And let's take an unemotional look at this phenomenon to really try and get under the hood of it, so to speak. And as best we can, try and find out what's behind it in a general way. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Joseph Arthur. I am making videos about overcoming procrastination and creative limitations. So anyway, let's look at trolls. What is this troll thing? And uh, how can we unpack it in a way that we eliminate their powers uh, to make us stop what we're doing? and see to it that they don't. Troll Town, what is it and how did it come to be? Before social media's big takeover of the psyche of the world, trolls were known as bullies. And bullies, at least the overt variety, the kind that bullies that are like, you suck, this, that, and the other thing, they, they were gone after school age, basically. I mean, as adults, bullying took on a different form, pre-social media there were still bullies but it wasn't as overt and then with social media it's become overt again in that kind of schoolyard way people like na 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 adults anyway we're largely uh so bullies were largely left on the schoolyard of our past bullies would obsessively stalk and target on the playground certain people then push them around hurl insults enlist cohorts to join in the torture campaign and generally make miserable the life of someone who in some way apparently irked or threatened the bully to become the focus of his or her ire. I love the word ire. I suppose psychological analysis of the bully has shown that obviously they were expressing their own trauma and fear and finding an external character to project it all on usually somebody who was different, maybe a bit nerdy, kind of like me, or socially awkward. The bully would seek out what he saw as a safe target, someone he knew wouldn't fight back. Incidentally, I was bullied a great deal when I was very young. In fact, I was bullied so bad in first grade that I was held back to repeat that grade so that I didn't lean on the younger side of the class, but rather the older side and that actually worked I also discovered humor that second year of first grade and became the class clown and somewhat popular in an outcast kind of way but from then on I always hated bullies and bullying and would stand up for the victims of it in my various classrooms the empathetic response I had to it uh, towards the victims of it was overwhelming and I wanted to beat the phenomenon down you could say the process of writing and making videos about defeating procrastination and overcoming creative limitations is a direct outreach of that. Uh, it's a similar thing. I mean, our own internal bullies are what stops us from doing our dreams. Uh, I feel like it led to uh, help people beat those particular bullies up. It's not dissimilar on some level. The bullies, as I said, are both internal and external. We need to analyze and overcome them all to arrive at our voice undeterred. But before social media, we left the bullies on the playground. People outgrew that dance to a large degree and would apologize for acting that way at class reunions the world over, sometimes with tearful confessions of abuse they incurred at the home front or else the revelation that they had been jealous of their target the whole time. These cliches of bullydom usually had some form of a sob story contained within because everything is energy and why would anyone invest their energy focusing on something or someone outside of themselves only to give or express animosity and hate i mean think about that it's like str a strange use of your energy if you're busy with your own vision and your own dream do you really have time to obsess about what someone else is posting enough to write hateful things about it 
I mean, if it's a political disagreement or something, that's one thing. But a lot of times these bullies will attack. I get attacked when I just uh, put songs up, for instance. <laughs> Someone or something that they've chosen to follow and seek out in the case of social media. Somebody's chosen to seek them out. Who has time for that or the psychological makeup for it? And as any of us who have pushed ourselves even slightly beyond the surface of what makes people tick understand that bullies or trolls are really just expressing garbage from their own internal world, kind of like litter bugs of the soul. You don't need to be Sigmund Freud to understand this. It's an elementary level of understanding of the psychology of man. To the point that one wonders why the public troll, the one who is trolling as his actual self, rather than some shadowy anonymous profile, isn't more embarrassed uh, to most of us with uh, any understanding of how humans work, he is literally trolling himself. What is the troll or bully expressing about himself? First and foremost, that he has time to do this, and you might say, yeah, but writing a mean comment doesn't take a whole lot of time. And where that may be true, to be in the psychological space where that becomes an option for you, though, does. We can only give others what we give ourselves. For instance, I've decided to make a prolonged attempt at overcoming limitations and factors that have held me back from fulfilling certain ambitions. And in doing that, write an account of that journey to help other people do the same. I am giving to others literally what I am giving to myself, and that cycle feeds on itself. To the point where I get up in the morning and know that my objective is to write on a subject that relates to that end. I go to sleep trying to find an idea to write about so that my subconscious can work on it. And then I get up and I pick a subject and begin the work, starting to write while my coffee is still percolating. I protect my headspace or my morning's consciousness like a bank guard. The money in the vault is my consciousness. The bank robbers are the various forms of distractions. News, media, social media, and trolls of all shapes and sizes. I make sure none of that energy is allowed anywhere near this valuable morning time before my child comes running in my room and throws toys at me. Which is a joy, I have to say. It's my time to write, and there has been preparations made the night before to maximize it. In other words, the time it takes to write something stretches beyond the actual writing time of whatever that thing is. To be a troll denotes a similar commitment to a mental landscape and one that isn't particularly flattering to the haters or the trolls. They are essentially communicating that they are lost that they aren't swept up in their own evolution, in their own desire to express themselves beyond an ugliness in their soul and overcome that ugliness to give encouragement to themselves or their fellow man. They're not interested in that. The phrase, you should be ashamed of yourself, comes to mind when analyzing this phenomenon. And the truth is, is that they are ashamed of themselves and to such an exaggerated degree that they are spewing that shame onto externalized projections on a public stage. They are embarrassing themselves with an unkept mind, like a strange episode of Cribs where the camera crew comes into a shack that is a disaster area with nothing but a rusted tricycle in the garage and perhaps corpses from the past that they still have issues with. I think it's helpful to see things like this and really break them down because the truth is to unlock your own limitations and pursue a vision you've held yourself back from will be met with many different aspects of resistance, which will at times work in concert to deter you from progress. And if you get ganged up on by the gang that is resistance, a troll can deliver a knockout punch to many in pursuit of a dream. But to really understand the pathetic nature of someone who is broken enough to negatively invest in stopping you does much to eliminate any dark power that could slip into their words. The best way to look at haters and trolls is to recognize what they actually are and to see that you wouldn't be provoking them if you didn't represent a threat, if you weren't provoking their envy by overcoming something they weren't or can't allow themselves to overcome. 
It's really as simple as that. Psychology 101. The only question you, you need to ask is, are they not embarrassed to display this level of brokenness, or are they so broken that they simply don't care? And if you really want to earn a black belt in the spiritual jujitsu that is this game, game a, say a prayer for them and keep it moving. Don't respond, though. Unless, don't respond to their hatred unless you feel like joining them in their garage with a rusted tricycle and some strange corpses of abuse from their past. Don't let the haters get you down. Uh, that's the main bottom line is consider the source. That's it. You just always have to consider the source. And if someone's taking the time to write some kind of hateful thing or some kind of you know, twisted thing towards something that you express, consider the source and don't quit.